In 2004, MySpace was the most visited site on the internet. He has an ideal mission, to unite people all over the world. It seemed like an ideal utopia. Why do I feel like I'm living in a dystopia? Let me show you how they did it, and you didn't even notice. So, you're seven years old. At this time, MySpace is the most visited site on the internet, even ahead of Google. The platform had a great mission, to unite people all over the world. But this was not a mainstream. The programmers forgot to block web markup when they launched an update, and users could customize the page themselves. For example, use any backgrounds or colors. In this way, people's profiles became very creative and bright, and everyone liked it. However, the simplicity made it easy to hack the site. This was the first bell that should have alerted us to social media. A young guy came to MySpace to sell his website for $75 million. They refused, not knowing that they lost the jackpot. It was Mr. Zuckerberg with his Facebook. He found a weak point in the competitor's forte. What exactly? We can agree that not all of us are designers. MySpace pages looked extremely overcrowded. Facebook went minimalist, and it worked. Then, you get a phone. You see the simple design and blue color that says, I'm safe. Oh yeah, much better with Facebook. Here it is, the first touch to the virtual world. But there's a catch. There were two more secret elements why investors invested more money in Facebook than in MySpace. First, this service was created as an addiction pill. Therefore, people returned to it every day to spend more time there. Second, money. What is Facebook paid for? For public relations. <laughs> That's what they called it in the company. This means they're selling your data. If you don't pay for the product, you are the product. The main task of Facebook is to predict your desires. MySpace's problem was that they didn't know how to monetize the platform. Facebook followed a cunning path and sold the data of its users. Want to know the best part? It did a person who values privacy like nobody else. Zuckerberg lives in a secluded 750-acre mega mansion in Hawaii. It's separated from the rest of the world by a six-foot wall. And in Palo Alto, he bought out four houses of his neighbors so that nothing interfered with his privacy. Zuckerberg, would you be comfortable sharing with us the name of the hotel you stayed in last night? Um... Uh... No. Now, I'll reveal you some secrets. Imagine that you're eating soup. If you imperceptibly add it to your plate, you'll eat much more than usual, and you won't even notice it. The same with the endless feed on social networks. There are whole teams working on things like likes or infinite feed for you to be constantly in the virtual world. Proof of this evil is the children of the founders, who aren't allowed to use social networks. Also, many of them study in Switzerland, where there's no gadgets. They know the negative consequences. You wouldn't give your child heroin at the age of seven, would you? I'll be honest with you. When I'm sad or anxious, I check my social media. When I upload and post a new video on YouTube and I don't see many views, it frustrates me. I become addicted to that magic like button. I think you do too. You don't realize it, but you are being programmed. Because American youth spend six to eight hours online every day. One of five students wake up in the middle of the night to check their social media. The more time you spend on Facebook, the more money they make. So they need to make sure that you're constantly stuck in the app. Facebook created the best advertising machine possible. In 2015, 3 million advertisers brought the company about $3.69 billion in revenue. So, the war for your attention has begun. If you've watched our previous videos, you know that the best way to eliminate competitors is to monopolize the market. Facebook has 3.5 billion active users, the power that the world's biggest dictators would want. Now, each user sees what they like. For example, if you like to smoke, You'll see posts about smoking. There will be a minimum of negativity in your search. Therefore, it seems to you that smoking is okay. The next president will be elected in the social networks. The day is coming when the politicians realize that these social media platforms are picking the next president, the next congressman. It's the year 2016. You're already an adult, and this is your first election. You want to make the right choice because the life of your country depends on it. Your position is against Trump, but then you go to your Facebook, which knows what you want to see. 
With the help of advertising, they show you fake news about Trump's competitor. By the way, fake news spreads six times faster and brings crazy money to the company. And before you know it, you choose Trump for the election. And Facebook receives more than $10 billion in profit. I want to share my experience. As a user of social media, I've noticed three problems. Comparison with others, loss of attention, and it's a time killer. In 2018, I watched a video of Matt Devella quitting social media for 30 days. I admired it and wanted to try it too. Therefore, I began to learn more about the influence of social networks on my life, and I went down the rabbit hole. Did you know that the average American spends five to six hours a day on a smartphone? 72% of Americans have at least one online account, and in only two industries, people are called users. Those who use drugs, and those who use social networks. So after that, I immediately deleted all social media. But without them, I felt disabled because our life is closely intertwined with the virtual world. So I decided to use Instagram after the end of the working day. Also, my screen is always black and white and has time limits. Now I'm focused on my development as much as possible. I also understood social networks don't unite us, but rather create the illusion of connection. Reality is the only real thing, and they want to deprive us of it. There is absolutely nothing left of the good mission to unite the world, to leave only an illusion. This is an incredible weapon. And now just imagine what can happen if it falls into the hands of a dictator. The biggest threat we face as a country from a counterintelligence perspective is from the People's Republic of China, and especially the Chinese Communist Party. No country presents a broader, more severe threat to our ideas, our innovation, our economic security than China. China for a long time has been fighting for global leadership with the United States. It spreads its technology and culture all over the world because they know that whoever controls the culture controls the population. For this, they created a unique product, TikTok. You never want to be bored. You want to feel fame, money, not to feel abandoned, to become successful faster. TikTok provides these basic desires to you. If you've watched the video up to this point, I congratulate you. Unfortunately, no TikTok user will ever watch it because it's longer than 15 seconds. Now admit, have you ever read the rules of using TikTok? It said, uh, we collect certain information about the device you use to access the platform, model of your device, the device system, network type, device IDs, your screen resolution and operating system, app and file names and types, keystroke patterns or rhythms. We may also associate you mm. with information collected from devices other than those you, you use to log into the platform. In China, TikTok has restrictions on recommending positive content. There's also a time limit to control yourself. And while we watch stupid challenges, the Chinese are teaching their children the art of war. And American companies are reinvesting in the Chinese economy at that time. So they sponsor a totalitarian regime that dreams of creating its own utopia. And it seems that there's nothing wrong with dreaming of creating a paradise on Earth. The Germans once also wanted to create their own paradise. They wanted to preserve the purity of their nation. Look at these photos. These are happy German soldiers and their families resting. At a few kilometers from them, smoke rises into the sky from the crematoria where Jews were burned. Every utopia of a totalitarian regime always ends in a dystopia. These smiling soldiers later became serial killers. If you notice, we moved from a good mission that turned into a utopia, and now this utopia is becoming an anti-utopia, and its name is the Metaverse. We are a company that builds technology to connect people, and the Metaverse is the next frontier, just like social networking was when we got started. Now, it's not known for sure on which platform the Meta world will be built, but Microsoft has a brilliant strategy a gaming industry that is gaining momentum and is the best platform for creating meta-universes. You'll ask me, how will it affect us? Our life will be a classic scenario of dystopia. High technologies, which should simplify life for humanity, give us social decay and urban poverty. The world is divided by a great wealth gap. The powerful and privileged live in luxurious mansions in Hawaii, 
while the majority struggled to survive in harsh, crime-ridden cities. Corporate giants control governments, technology, the economy, and every aspect of your life. You have no privacy because Big Brother is watching you. The tools created today are starting to erode the social mechanisms in society. Algorithms are starting to get out of human control. For them, there's no difference between positive and outright evil. This future is an illusion to which we confidently go without thinking. We are ruled, our minds are stamped, our tastes are shaped, and ideas are inspired by those we have never seen. And this was said by the father of propaganda, who forced women to smoke. To learn more about the impact on humanity, click on the video about vaping.